the Lakers winning. I mean, it felt like almost yesterday where I said, oh my gosh, this Lakers team is really bad. But, and they've somehow turned that all around coming towards the final, the final days of the season. Now, I don't understand why they couldn't turn this on like way before in the beginning of the season, but doesn't matter. Maybe maybe all of this is just like a game. Like maybe LeBron is just playing around with the league and is like, "Okay, I'm going to play. I'm going to be bad so that we could lower everyone's expectations." And then when they least expect it, I turn up and start hooping. That's sort of what it seems like with this team. And for some reason, like I again, I do not understand what is the point in going all out now instead of going all out from the start. But I guess they just wanted to be healthy come playoffs. Regardless, I still think it's definitely better for your team so that way you can have a better position in the playoffs so you don't have to play play-in games. That way, if you, you come out strong, you don't have to play those play-in games, and you give LeBron time to rest, which is ultimately like the goal here. But let's talk about the game itself. So the game went into double overtime. Anthony Davis got 34 points and 23 rebounds, and played 52 minutes. This man is different. Like, 52 minutes, and we used to call him, we used to say he was made out of glass, we called him Mr. Glass, we called him all these types of things, we always make fun of him, but now he hasn't missed, well, he's barely missed any games this Lakers season, and... He literally just played 52 minutes. So it shows that these players, they can. They 100% can keep themselves healthy. Sometimes they just don't want to play. And I thank the Lord that the NBA introduced this, the new rule of like have, needing 65 games in order to be eligible for, um, to be compensated for like all NBA teams or even be considered to join all NBA teams. It is... The, one of the best additions that the NBA has added because now we actually get to see these players in the regular season. Like, there's no n- random news like, oh, this guy went down with an injury. Oh, this guy's going to load manage. There's none of that. Like, that's honestly like sort of the drama that we were missing. We were missing <laughs> Kawhi Leonard just missing games because he wants to load manage. We were missing... Kyrie Irving just missing games because he wants to miss games because I don't know there's a crisis going on in Ukraine or there's a crisis going on in um in Israel slash Palestine whatever you want to call it whatever kind of problems may have come up like or whatever excuses Kyrie would have brought up just to not play the game there's none of that this season and it's really like it's leaving me not much room to talk about a lot of things, but still, I'm going to make it work. You know me. Austin Reeves, he ended the game 10 for 20, 50% from the field. Very nice. 29 points. And D'Angelo Russell, he also ended with 29 points, but he shot a little bit more inefficient, going 7 of 22 from the field and 5 of 12 from 3. He hit all of his free throws, though, and that was the big difference maker between this team and the Bucks. The free throws taken and the free throws made. The free throw differential for the Lakers was through, was 32 to 17. And this has been something that the Lakers have sort of been getting away with. Like of all the teams to play in the to play their NBA games, I believe they get the most foul calls. Like and you know, it's expected like when you are the Lakers with how you play. I mean, you tend to take a lot of inside shots given how, you know, LeBron, he always takes those inside shots. And Anthony Davis also takes inside shots. And obviously, it leaves more room for you to get fouled. So, it makes total sense. Excuse me. But it is a little bit inconvenient if you are literally any other team because this free throw differential is like, it happens almost every single time. Austin Reeves, he also notched 50 minutes in this game. Actually, wait, no. Well, 48 minutes. Close to 50 minutes, but 48 minutes. He also ended with a triple-double with 14 rebounds and 10 assists. 29 points, 14 rebounds, 10 assists. This is very, very good production coming in from this Lakers team. And this is the kind of production that is expected of them and what they should be able to do going into the playoffs. Like, the fact that the Lakers are able to beat the Bucks, who were just like coming off of a big win against Oklahoma and who have been winning recently, this is a very, very good step in the right direction for the Lakers. 
And the Bucks, it's not like they played bad in this game either. Giannis ended the game with 29 points, um, 21 rebounds, and 11 assists. So a pretty good triple-double, if you ask me. Damian Lillard ended the game with 27 points. He also fouled out with six personal fouls. But honestly, it was probably a little bit better that he wasn't playing because in the game, he shot 9 for 29. 9 for 29 for 27 points and getting and going 3 of 14 from 3. That is pitiful. Like, I don't know what's going on with Dame. Like, he's shooting very inefficient when Giannis is playing. But when Giannis doesn't play, he shoots the ball so much better. I don't understand what what the pressure is. I, I don't understand why it's like... It's weird. Is he like... Is it illegal for Damian Lillard to play good with help? <laughs> is it illegal? <laughs> like, I don't understand why they're, um, why he always has these performances when Giannis has these fantastic performances. He's... Dame is literally holding this team back from being the elite team that I thought they were in the beginning of the season. I thought they would figure it out by now, but they haven't. And I don't understand how. Like, it's... It's not that difficult of a concept, I don't think it is. I mean, Damian Lillard, he played a lot better on Portland when there was literally all the attention was on him. Now the attention is split between him and Giannis. Why isn't he playing well with Giannis? That does not make any sense to me, and it's just, it really just, it boggles my mind, and I don't understand why the he's lacking. Like, it's literally like he's lacking. How was he even an all-star? Explain to me, people in the comments, how was this man even an all-star? Does not make any sense to me whatsoever. But I digress. So, the rest of the people that... Michael Malik Beasley, he played really well. 8 of 18 from the field. 21 points. 5 of 14 from 3. If these guys were to hit just a little bit more shots than they did, they would have ended up winning this game, without a doubt. Just a little bit more. Let's see, looking more on the box scores. Um, Chris Middleton ended the game 4 of 15 from the field. So, again, he wasn't doing that well either. These players, the, the other options that are expected to perform, they just aren't performing. And that's been the problem with the Bucks, And that's also been the problem with the Lakers. Right now, thankfully, the Lakers, they were able to put on a great performance to sort of mitigate all of that and, like, give the Lakers fans hope and give me hope that because remember the Lakers they didn't have LeBron in this game so these players they did they did all of this without LeBron James like 12 assists coming in from D'Lo 23 rebounds coming in from AD and 14 coming in from Austin Reeves and 10 assists like this is really good this this is really good performance coming in from this team a really good performance like 40 point of like right now their record is 40 and 32 the Los Angeles Lakers they're well in the play in spot they are way ahead of the Golden State Warriors in terms of record and they're also ahead of the Houston Rockets in terms of record as well so i don't think the Lakers have to worry about playing them in the near future or excuse me I don't think the Lakers have to worry about not making the play-in in the near future. That's what I meant to say. And they honestly, they have a good shot in catching up to the Suns spot right now. The Suns right now are the eighth seed, which is honestly very surprising, especially with a team that has Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. <laughs> Excuse me. Like, I think, it's, I think this Phoenix Suns team, again, very surprising that they're even in this situation. Like, the Pelicans should be the team that is in the play-in right now compared to the Suns being in the play-in, but it is what it is. And seeing the seeing a team with KD, like, be this struggle this much really doesn't make any sense to me. And it's starting to get to that point, at least for me, where we really have to seriously talk about where KD stands because he's not in the top 10, and I really don't think he deserves to be in the top 20 whatsoever. He is incredibly, like, his entire career has revolved around having help. And we want to put him on the level of LeBron or Steph or things like that. Like, are you serious? Like, at least Steph didn't really have that much help in the finals sometimes. Like, not saying that Jordan Poole wasn't helped, but there would be games where 
nobody would show up, and Steph Curry had to do what he had to do. Like it doesn't, it didn't happen. It didn't happen often, but there were games where they had to do that, and they're not on the same level. Curry and Kevin Durant, they're not on the same level. LeBron and Kevin Durant, they're not on the same level either. And it, I, I'm honestly a little bit flabbergasted that the Suns are even in the play-in spot. But speaking of play-in, I mean, the Warriors right now, they're in very dangerous. They're in a very dangerous spot because if if the Houston Rockets end up coming out, like continuing to play as good as they've been playing, I think it's a really, really big problem. Really big problem. I mean, maybe it'll stop for a little bit now because the Houston Rockets, they are playing against the Thunder tonight at 8 o'clock. So maybe that's the breathing room that the the Warriors needed so that that way they can continue to get back on track and things of that nature. And let me just see. I just want to make sure that they... Did they win the previous... Did the Warriors win the previous game? I'm going to check. No, they did not win the previous game that they played. I f- it was the Timberwolves. I thought they played yesterday, but they didn't. And they played the Timberwolves, and they're going to... Actually, no, they did play yesterday, and they lost to the Heat. That's my bad. I didn't realize... I didn't see that game. They beat the Heat 113-92. So they're coming off of a Heat... They're coming off of a win, and now they have to go play the Orlando Magic today at 7 o'clock. So... The matchups are looking much more in favor of Golden State, at least right now, to make the play-in than Houston does. But then again, what do I know? Houston could all of a sudden, like, Jalen Green might all of a sudden turn into Kobe Bryant that game and just hit clutch shot after clutch shot after clutch shot. Who knows what he could do? Because at this rate, he can do anything that he sets his mind to. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how I feel when, I, when I've watched him play. Like, he's hitting turnarounds, and, like, I'm going to get into him in, like, um, a little bit, but... With that, we are out of time for this um, first segment. So now I'm going to go ahead and pivot to NCAA and give a little comparison on both NCAA gameplay and the game of the NBA basketball, like the differences between both of them, as well as give a little bit of an update on what's to expect going into um, the next, the, the Sweet 16, which is happening tomorrow and Friday. So stay tuned. I will be right back after this short break.